The Dallas Cowboys released James Washington on Wednesday. Why didn't that move work out? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked, 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 Locked On. Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, then this app is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using promo code LOCKDOWN in the game. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Lana McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Lana, what's going on? Not much. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, always love question days. We're getting to the end of the season. You know, Marcus, this is technically the last regular season Twitter question batch we get. So uh, let's finish the season strong. Uh, let's get some good questions in. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get to talk to Cowboys another day, which is great. Yeah. We, we had a lot of people ask about James Washington, who the Cowboys officially released on Wednesday. Did not catch a single pass for the Cowboys during his NFL career or during his, uh, this, this wild season. Only had one target. Uh, first of all, why make this move now rather than a few weeks ago? Well, it sounds like they're still kind of uh, in the market for maybe signing one more street free agent offensive lineman just to kind of uh, you know help solidify things there in that room. Um, and, and I just think that, you know, it's, it just hasn't, it hasn't really worked out with James Washington. I, I, you know, I think you and I were onto this pretty early that this was uh, kind of an odd fit and, you know, we weren't sure exactly what they were going to get out of him. Um, obviously, you know, circumstance all played a huge part of here too. Yeah. He got injured, you know, and, and that's obviously why he missed all that time and he missed critical time and training camp. And, um, you know, it was just, it, it just didn't quite work out with the injury and with everything else that was happening. You know, I think originally the idea was for him to come in and kind of have a, a you know, a, a presence and an effect similar to what they ended up getting from T.Y. Hilton. Um, but I just don't think that that ever really panned out. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a, it was a flyer on a veteran free agent that they liked. Um, and, you know, since you got someone like T.Y. Hilton in here, it's kind of a no harm foul situation, no harm no foul situation, but yeah. Yeah. it does feel like it was kind of a, a, a wasted opportunity for both sides because of, unfortunately it was James, James's in, injury situation. And then ultimately not being able to really kind of incorporate him into the offense. Uh, so late in the season, it, it felt like the Cowboys were looking for somebody that w- could win in the same way as Michael Gallup, right? Like a downfield stretcher yeah. who can win in the contested, you know, ball situations. Right. And, they needed that when Michael Gallup was going to miss the first X amount of games of the season, right? They just wanted to have that guy on the roster. But once James Washington went down with an injury, it, by the time he got back, Michael Gallup already had, what, five, six, seven games under his belt. And you, you d- certainly don't need two of those guys on the field at the same time. So, Lena, I could have seen a world where this worked out and he was a big part of their offensive game plan early on yeah. in the season, but it didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, I, I see it the same way, right? Where I think that it was it was supposed to be a, a, a you know kind of a bridge until Gallup was healthy, not even just back, but healthy. Um, and and yeah, unfortunately, because of his own injury, it really screwed the timing of it up. And I think that's the thing that you and I came up with too, right? Is that like at this point, you know, I think you and I. I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I, I understood the signing initially in some degree. It's a place but, more, basically. Yeah, right? uh, but I, after the injury, I think you and I both agreed that it didn't make a ton of sense for him to, like, be the still roster. be here. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah because, like, it, it, at that point, he's coming back later than Gallup did. He didn't provide that kind of bridge situation. And ultimately, what ended up happening with him is not surprising, you know, and no. it's kind of what we expected after the injury. So... Um, you know, good luck to James Washington. Maybe he ends up back on the practice squad because they like him and, you know, he lives in the area. So who knows? But, 
you know, I, I think that that was an experiment that unfortunately just didn't work out for the Cowboys. And it probably would make a lot of sense for him to come back for Dallas, come back to Dallas, sign the practice squad, sign a futures deal, and just be in the same offensive system for another year. And like, let's see, maybe, maybe somebody throws out a big offer for Noah Brown this offseason, and you lose Noah Brown, and he could step into that Noah Brown role where he's playing as the fourth receiver, he's doing a bunch of blocking. Like, I could see something potentially like that. I could also see him being like, you know what? It didn't work out here. It's clear I'm not going to be a top three receiver. Let me go somewhere else where I can try to get snaps. I, I could see either way happening. Um, one of the big takeaways, though, that I did have from the signing, and actually I thought of it yesterday when watching some some college receivers, is I, I, I just don't know if these guys fit with what Dallas wants to do and what Dak wants to do. It, every guy that seems like works well with Dak are guys that get open quickly and create separation, whether it's CD lamb, you can see it right away with T Y Hilton. Cole Beasley had a lot of success with Dak. Uh, Bryce Butler actually had a lot of success with Dak because he could create separation quickly. Like that's kind of the mold of receiver I'm looking for now with Dak is these guys that just can play multiple positions and win by getting open fast. I think Dak definitely likes those guys. I, I think the, the issue is that the other guys, you know, the the throw it even when they're not open guys that, that Dak likes, it takes a long time to gain that trust. You know, well, you already and, have one of Michael Gallup, right? Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Gallup is that guy, and he's kind of earned that trust over time. And even now, having come back from the injury, it still feels like there's hesitancy to kind of throw him up. And look, Gallup isn't hundred percent, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. but I, I do think that that it's not, I, I don't think that it's so much that Dak only likes those guys, but I do think that there is something to the idea that Dak takes a while to kind of warm up to those types of receivers, to earn that trust, to kind of just throw the ball up uh, to those guys. And that's the problem, right? Is that you, especially if you draft a guy like that um, or if you sign a guy, really, uh, it, it, it can take a little while to kind of get up up on the same page, and so there's like a level of uh, of uh, kind of impatience in the in the mm-hmm. fan base to kind of get those guys up to speed. Yeah, so we're gonna have plenty of time this offseason to talk about receivers because it yeah. sure seems like the Cowboys are gonna need uh, to get at least another one. But uh, let's get into some more Twitter questions. But before we do that, we want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, your dream can come true with this game, and it's definitely for you. You get to manage every single strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're going to be responsible for just about everything, including hiring players and coaches, uh, or sorry, hiring the right coaches and coordinators, drafting players, making trades, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of the season. All of this in a challenging but realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. Lockdown Cowboys listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code LOCKDOWN in the game store. That's LOCKDOWN, all caps. So make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the App Store. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. Lane, let's uh, let's get to some questions. First one from Mark about T.Y. Hilton. How much more involvement should we expect from T.Y. Hilton now that he's hit the ground running? Like, Do you expect him to play 25 snaps in the playoffs, 30 snaps, more than that? Yeah, I was trying to. I was actually. Uh, I saw that question earlier, and I was going to try and see if I could ke- get a snap count from what Ty Hilton's been doing the last few games. But yeah. I imagine that it's been somewhere in the in the range of like twenty to thirty snaps or something, maybe even less than that. Um, I, I imagine. Yeah, I do anticipate it going up. I think the the, you know, the whole process has been kind of a, just a ramp up to get him into the offense a little bit more. And I think uh, it, it clearly seemed like they were kind of focusing on third down packages with him opportunities for him to get on the field uh, to kind of learn that aspect first, because that's what they felt like they needed him the most. Here's a uh, uh, 12 yeah. against Philadelphia, 22 against Tennessee. Okay. So yeah, I, I expect that to go up to, you know, somewhere between 25 to 35 snaps. Okay. That you know? seems like and, the right amount. Right. And I think yeah, you, you, you get him in there obviously for th- your third downs, critical third downs. Um, and then some early uh, uh, snaps to kind of get, get him some looks, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't start to see more 
Um, you, you know, going back and watching the tape uh, for the Tennessee game, I was surprised how many plays it felt like were being run to Noah Brown. Um, and I think that I think that 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 that's where you'll start to see you know more of the kind of target adjustment, right? Is is yep. Uh, you know, James, we just said James Washington got released, but he he literally only had had one target the entire time he'd been here. Yeah. Noah Brown is someone who's getting targeted regularly. So if we're talking about, you know, whose targets we're actually going to be eating into, I would say that that's where you start. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't know exactly if you, you might start seeing him carry the ball, maybe on reverse or something like that. But I do think that Possibly. now that he's it, that, that he's been in the system for a little bit longer, uh, it's and it's reasonable to expect again. I love Noah Brown, but you know I think he had a lot, a lot more targets than you know I would have probably given him this last game. He's and, he's a fine complementary player that gets targets when everybody else is covered, but he can't be a focal point of your offense. Well, I mean, especially since he's had some issues with drops and some, yeah. some easy throws lately. So I, I think you know it might be time to kind of relieve him of some of that uh, target, you know. Uh, nest, uh, target the scale back his work a little bit yeah and, and again you need him on special teams too so it's not like he's going anywhere it's just no. i think it's 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 time and, and 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 you know don't completely take him out of it i just think that if you're talking about where these targets are going to come from noah brown is where i would start um and a lot i mean just to kind of tie this to a couple other questions a lot of people want to know about ty potentially coming back next year um that's I think the Cowboys would be open to it, but I, I got to believe that that's going to be more of like a, an emergency plan rather than, hey, we're going to sign you after the season to a two-year deal and you're going to be our number two receiver. Like that's, I think you're more likely to see something happen like it happened the way, this year, right? Play yeah. Noah Brown, play Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb, and then if we need you midway through the season, that's when we'll give you a call. Well, I mean, I think the other part of it is what's T.Y. want to do? Yeah. You know, I mean, clearly T.Y. made it a conscious decision to miss half the season, to watch or more than half the season, three quarters yeah. of the season, to, to watch his sons play football. Um, is that something that he desires to do next year? Does he think he can do a similar situation where he sits out most of the season and then shows up in the playoffs? Probably. I don't, I don't know. But if he does, you know, that may be the route he want to go. And if that's the case, you know, the Cowboys can't wait on that. They can always keep him in the Rolodex for a late season call, but – Yep. You, you, you got to you gotta have a plan in place. All right, let's get to a, a couple more questions. This one from Jeffrey. He wants to know, are we being unfair to some of these younger draft picks? People expect everyone to hit the ground running. I think Calvin Joseph and Jalen Tolbert need more time to develop before we heap playing time expectations on them. What do you think? I think that's totally fair. You know, I, I think everyone develops at their own rate. Um, I think both of those guys, from what I've seen in, in training camp, have a lot of natural talent. Um, you know, I think Tolbert is a guy who just has not played a ton of football. You know, he's just total, not, not even just like just at the position or anything. He's just he was a he was late to the game, so that uh, really kind of hurt his opportunities on special teams, which hurt his opportunities to get on the field. Um, I think a, an off season of really working at becoming a wide receiver, learning how to play special teams, I would not at all be shocked next year if, if we see a huge jump from Jalen Tolbert. And then for Joseph, look, you know, he has as much natural talent at the position as, as you could possibly want. It's the hardest position outside of quarterback to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. It's just incredibly hard. Uh, and it's so hard that you could do – you know, uh, 99 out of a play out of a hundred plays correctly. And that one play that you did incorrectly is going to be all that anybody talks about for the rest of the week. And, and that's the standard. Like I'm not suggesting that we adjust the standard for Kelvin Joseph. Uh, but I think, you know, clearly this is a guy that it's taking a little bit longer to kind of catch on to. Um, there's, there's, there's something there. There's, there's talent there. There's, there's ability there. Uh, and I think that, you know, we should at least give him another year to see if he can kind of fully embrace the, the professional lifestyle, kind of nail down the particulars and the specifics of the position. Cause I think that's where he's struggling and then see if you can really unlock that skill. Because I do think that, look, if you can get Kelvin Joseph kind of playing at a professional level, uh, focused on the details, focus on what he's supposed to be doing, uh, you you really have an opportunity to greatly upgrade your defensive backfield uh, going into next season. 
And if you don't, then you know it's it's you've got three guys clearly that you like enough that you can play and you feel comfortable about in the future. There's still the opportunity to go next year and draft somebody and get a couple, bring a couple people in, see how Jordan Lewis or Anthony Brown heal from their injuries. Yeah, there, there's options there in the future. I, I think that there's enough in our room that we should pr- continue to provide Kelvin Joseph with an opportunity to grow. I think I'm a little bit more lenient or going to be patient with Jalen Tolbert because he's a small school receiver um, who was drafted in the third round. And we just know like receivers outside of round one and early yeah. round two really don't produce at all. Go look at some of the other guys that are drafted around him and those guys are doing nothing. So I think in an offense, that's a lot of, you have to react and make route decisions based on the coverages. It's, it's going to be tough for somebody like Jalen Tolbert. I will say, Next year is a huge year for him. Like he's yes, got to be part of the rotation. If he's a healthy scratch at the beginning of next year, that's when I start to get really, really worried. But I, I'm not panicking on him yet. Uh, you know, I think the thing here is is the and I would like to separate these two just a little bit, right? Is that Joseph? We're we are asking for patience. You know, or at least I am because I think he has talent and I think that will shine through. Tolbert, like he's on, he's technically on track. You know, yes. like like that, like we should we're not we shouldn't be in the realm of like does this guy deserve to be on the roster next year? Any of that this year? This is like you mentioned, he's a small school third round receiver. He, he you should be giving him at least two or three years to kind of fully see what you're getting out of this guy. So we we hope that he can develop early. We hope that he can come in here and and provide some snaps. I think for the reasons that I mentioned before, it was hard to kind of roster him to get him the, the the wide receiver snaps you wanted to get him experience because he couldn't play special teams and this team, the way it was arranged, it just couldn't handle a uh, down roster wide receiver that didn't play special teams. Yep. Yep. So uh, I think, yeah, those are, I just wanted to point out that the separation between yes, these I two agree. where Joseph, you know, we're, we're being patient here. Tolbert, like this is, this is where the, anything above where we are now would have been gravy. This is, this is where about where he probably should. Be. And for Tolbert, like, there's going to be this roster is just going to look different the next year at receiver. Like, yeah, I, I don't see a world in which the Cowboys bring back CD Lamb, Michael Gallup, Noah Brown, and Jalen Tolbert and just say, Hey, those are our top four receivers and we're good. Like, mm-hmm. something's going to happen there, whether that's Noah Brown getting a bigger deal, whether that's Cowboys drafting somebody or whatever. Like, it's going to look different. So, um, maybe there'll be an opportunity for Jalen Tolbert to rise up the depth chart a little bit. We'll see. Uh, let's get to some more questions, Landon. But we want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experience to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you get quickly attract uh, qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeted tools. They go beyond resume data uh, using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates, identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all in one platform it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That is linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to t- post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Like a lot of people want to know about the Cowboys pass rush. Uh, question from Corey. Do you believe we will see the pass rush when it matters the most after a couple of games of not getting sacks? I think people are starting to get a little bit nervous. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, I think we shouldn't, shouldn't, you know, let's not box score scouts sacks. Cause it's not like the, the pass rush didn't have a major effect on what happened this last Sunday. Yeah. Um, and, and, and honestly, it wasn't like the mate, the pass rush hasn't had an effect, you know, these last two Sundays it has. Um, so I, I think that, the, the pass rush has been there. Look, I, I think if you go back and look at the way uh, the defense has played the last few weeks, it, it's not it's not what you expected early in the season, right? Like they 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 aren't uh, uh, quite limiting uh, teams to 
uh, uh, you know, under 20 points every single game. But but part of that is also offenses are just getting to the end of the season and, and starting to click a little bit more. Oh yeah, I did. I the did defenses see are that, wearing down. It happens every year. Yeah, and and I and I think that I did see that someone was pointing out. Like I saw another person who tweeted about that, like that the Cowboys were unable to stop uh, offenses with below average quarterbacks. And I and I and it's like, let's give some credit here to some of these teams that we played. Like uh, Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like you know, at the time that that happened to us. You know, we there was a lot of people like you let this happen with the Jaguars, but you know, look at what's happened with that team in the last six weeks and how well that offense has played. It's playing like one of the best offenses in football. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think yes, yeah, so the Tennessee playing with the backups, you know, playing with a backup quarterback. But you know, as much as we may are kind of hand wringing all of that, we only allowed thirteen points. You know, the Eagles are the Eagles. You know, like the one of the best teams in football, one of the best offenses in football. I understand that Gardner Mishu was the quarterback. But you only only allow twenty seven points to them. So, I, I think that there's a level of panic about the defense when the defense is kind of just adjusting to what the yeah. end of the season stuff. Look, this is this defense the San Francisco 49er defense? No, I don't think it is. Uh, but I think that 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 doesn't mean that this isn't still a really good defense that can get you stops uh, in a timely manner when you need them because that's what this defense has shown to me that they can like that it gets the stops when you really really need it. This team will transition more to a offensive reliant team as the team, yes. season goes on. As the team gets better, the defense needs to transition more to a timely, uh, uh, you know, uh, turnover heavy uh, uh, closer type defense, yes. as opposed to trying to keep teams under 15 points every single game, which is unrealistic. And, and again, you mentioned like at the very top, don't box score st- uh, scout here because I can promise you. In the Tampa Bay game, the pass rush is going to have an impact. Now, yeah. very good chance, Lana, the Cowboys don't sack Tom Brady. Like, I'm just telling you, yeah. there's a very, very good chance they don't sack him because Brady just doesn't take a lot of sacks. But it's going to alter their game plan, right? Like, that's the have, point. That, that's the They're going to the ball quick, which we know. We know is going to happen. We, that's the thing we need to keep in mind is that the pass rush is having an effect. Just look at the game planning that's happening these last few weeks, these teams that are playing us. They are having to work around our, our pass rush. Having to work around the pass rush is having an effect on that offense, yes. uh, and it's having an effect on their offense's ability to win games. So I think that's ultimately what you're looking for, and I, I completely agree with with your assessment. Tom Brady in the past, in order to avoid pass rush, gets the ball out quickly. I think the difference between this year and previous years is that when he gets the ball out quickly now – they aren't breaking tackles the way that they used to, you know? And, and I think that if you have guys like Leighton Vander Esch and Clark and all these guys back, they're going to be able to kind of play that plays into the Dallas defense a little bit more than, I, you know, I will say though, I, they're going to need Dan Quinn to adjust a little bit. Like, sure. I think sometimes they get a little soft in coverage, right? Against these teams that get rid of the ball quick and they just dare teams to have 12, 13 play drives. Against the Bucks, you can't do that because that's exactly the way they have to play offense. That's right? the way they want to play. They, that's they want to play offense. So yeah. that's what I'd like to see. You know, more guys closer to the line of scrimmage, more guys already in the flat. So basically, taking away that that sideline throw to Leonard Fournette that gets four yards every single time. Like make Brady hold the ball a little bit longer. Yes, you might give up a fifty-five yard bomb to Julio Jones or Mike Evans, but it ultimately might end up being worth it if you can get a couple quick three and outs or you could jump up you know a pass and get a, a pick six or something that's where i'd like to see dan quinn just adjust his game plan a little bit uh to cater what tom brady is going to do that's yeah all. i think that's an interesting uh, interesting take for sure yeah we'll see still we have a week to get ready we for do. that game assuming it happens right there's still yeah. an outside chance the cowboys don't play tampa bay in round one but uh, we'll make sure we break it all down. We got a busy rest of the week. Uh, we got a crossover show coming tomorrow, previewing the the game against the Washington Commanders. Landon, you and I will be back on Friday to get ready for the game on Sunday. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast, bringing you the local insights you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Locked on NFL available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, all same places that you download the Locked on Cowboys podcast. Check out Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. See you guys next time.